Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have an interesting sequence. Notice the numbers keep repeating. It may have a 1, a 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. And when you look at those numbers and you graph them out, they kind of look like this. So let's graph the first one out. So we have, we start with a 1, a 0, a negative 1, a 0, a 1, a 0, a negative 1, 0. 1 and so forth, so it looks like a trigonometric function. And in this case, that looks like a cosine function, cosine of x, so to speak. Of course, we could offset that and say, well, if we start with 0 and then we go up, we can have a sine function like this. So this is a sine function, that's a cosine function. So we can probably express this sequence either in terms of the sine or the cosine. In addition to that, we realize that the numbers repeat. We have 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. So it repeats every four numbers. Every four numbers and realizing that the sine and the cosine repeat once every two pi radians. So from there to there. This is 2 pi radians. And also from there to there, this is 2 pi radians. And if we divide 2 pi by 4, we get pi over 2. So we know that the numbers increase or change in value every pi over 2 radians. So we know that the increment has to be somehow in the form of pi over 2. And we're going to be able to use a cosine function or a sine function or maybe both. Let's try to express it in both the cosine and the sine function. All right, also we have to realize that the n values, n, there's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so forth. So notice that when n is equal to 1, we are already at this value. So here, if n is equal to 1, we're at the function being equal to 1 which means that the sign seems to be in sync with the n values. So let's start off by expressing this as a sine function. So we could say that the first value here, when n equals 1, can be written as the sine of 1 times pi over 2. And the second value here can be expressed as the sine of 2 pi over 2, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 times pi is pi, and the sine of pi is 0, which is this value right there. The third value, negative 1, can be expressed as the sine of 3 pi over 2, which is 270 degrees, which gives us a negative 1 when we take the sine of that. And finally, the fourth value can be expressed as the sine of 4 pi over 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2, sine of 2 pi is 0, and yes, it seems to be in sync. So we have the number 1 here, which is the n value, 2, which is the n value, 3, which is the n value, 4, which is the n value, which means that using the sine function, we can say that a sub n is equal to the sine of n times pi over 2. So let's write the cosine of 1 times pi. Well, for the cosine to be 1, we have to have 0 times pi over 2, so 0 times pi over 2. And that would be for the cosine to be equal to 1. And for the cosine to be 0, we need the cosine of 1 times pi over 2. And for the cosine to be negative 1, we need the cosine of 2 pi over 2. And for the cosine to be 0 again, we have to have the cosine of 3 pi over 2, and so forth. So you can see when n is equal to 1, the number in front is 0. When n is equal to 2, the number in front is 1. When n is equal to 3, the number in front is 2. In other words, the number in front of the pi over 2 is always 1 less than the value of n, which means we can then express the sequence a sub n in terms of the cosine by simply subtracting 1 from n and writing this as n minus 1 times pi over 2. And then we have the exact same result. So as the sine, 
we write it like this. When we use the cosine, we have to subtract 1 from n so that we're in phase with the numbers in the sequence. It may be interesting to note to see how these two equations are related to each other by doing a little trick here. Let's multiply this angle out here and see what we get. So this could also be written as follows. We have a sub n is equal to the cosine and now we're going to take the angle and write it as n pi over 2 minus pi over 2. So this means that we can write this in a relationship between the sine and the cosine as follows. The sine of theta can be written as the cosine of theta minus pi over 2, which means that if we take the cosine function and shift it to the right by pi over 2, we get the sine function. And here we have the cosine function. If we shift it to the right by pi over 2, this will move over here, and indeed we'll then have the sine function. So that shows that we can write the solution, the sequence, either as a sine function or a cosine function, because the cosine function and the sine function are simply shifted by pi over 2 relative to one another. Both of these forms will indeed be the solution to this sequence. And that's how it's done.